SpaceX, owned by Elon Musk, just completed its third Starship test flight and is preparing for the next one. On Saturday, the billionaire revealed the goal of the next mission, and that is how to survive re-entry. And so in this episode, we'll find out how SpaceX will make it happen and how a self-sustaining Starship could carry humanity to distant worlds. Hey folks, welcome back to Elon Musk Evolution, where we bring you the most recent news about Elon Musk and his multi-billion dollar companies, space news, and the latest science and technology. But before we begin, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon so you don't miss any of our amazing videos. At 5,000 tons, Starship is the largest flying object ever made, Elon Musk said in a post on X on Saturday. He also mentioned that it is the first spaceship design capable of making life multiplanetary, and that its thrust is more than double that of the Saturn V moon rocket. Goal of the next mission is to make it through the meteorically extreme heat of re-entry, Musk stated as Starship prepares for its upcoming mission. SpaceX has developed a powerful launch vehicle called Starship that can accommodate up to 100 passengers on extended interplanetary flights. In addition, it is intended for point-to-point -point transportation on Earth, satellite distribution, and the establishment of a moon base. During its third test flight last month, Starship, which was launched from SpaceX's manufacturing and test facilities close to Boca Chica Beach, South Texas, reached orbital speed for the first time, as Starship was re-entering the planet's atmosphere at hypersonic speed. SpaceX commentators reported that Mission Control lost contact with the spacecraft simultaneously from two satellite systems. Likewise, SpaceX said on Monday that it had fired up all six of the Raptor engines in preparation for the upcoming Starship mission. Usually, engines are ignited momentarily during pre-launch tests when a vehicle stays tethered to the pad. The fourth flight is likely to take place in early May. And so, how will Starship survive re-entry? Elon Musk, the CEO of SpaceX, explains how Starship is supposed to survive orbital re-entry, which is by far the most challenging time for the spacecraft and unquestionably the most difficult engineering problem SpaceX has to solve. In 2019, SpaceX technicians started the process of fastening multiple Tesla Model SX battery packs, which have a 400 kilowatt hour storage capacity, to a subcomponent that will eventually be deployed inside the Starship nose. The procedures used by Starship for re-entry and recovery, which Elon Musk has explained in detail, are directly tied to the necessity for all that power. The electric motors required to operate the huge control surfaces of Starship, which consist of two large aft wings and two forward fins, require around 400 kilowatt hours of batteries. Starship stability is controlled by very rapid movement of rear and forward fins during entry and landing, according to Musk, which means that in order to maintain stable flight, the spacecraft will need to continuously adjust its control surfaces. Making sure that Starship can withstand many orbital velocity re-entries with minimal to no wear and tear, a requirement for Starship to be economically viable, is by far the largest hurdle that SpaceX encounters. At the beginning of atmospheric re-entry, Starship will be moving at a minimum of 7.8 kilometers per second while in low Earth orbit. To put it simply, most of the kinetic energy must be converted into heat in order for the spacecraft to slow down and arrive on Earth. Although there is some choice in terms of how quickly one wants to turn that energy into heat, as Musk pointed out, this reality is all but inevitable. The quickest path to Earth would be to enter the atmosphere directly, which would cause the surface of a spacecraft to heat up to such a high degree that exceptionally rare heat shields and thermal protection systems would become essential. With Starship, SpaceX hopes to strike a compromise in which the spaceship creates lift with its body and aerodynamic control surfaces before carefully and gradually descending into Earth's atmosphere over the course of more than 15 minutes. Musk points out that while this significantly reduces peak heating, it also increases the total amount of energy that Starship must disperse. It's comparable to cooking something at 300 degrees for 30 minutes in the oven, as opposed to 600 degrees for 10 minutes. The re-entry profile of Starship resembles that of NASA's now-retired space shuttle to some extent. The space shuttle took about 30 minutes to reach touchdown from its re-entry burn, but because Starship takes a very different route at lesser speeds, it appears that it will take about 20 minutes from orbit to touchdown. Starship will effectively stall itself until its forward velocity reaches almost zero, at which point the massive spacecraft will fall belly down towards Earth and use its wings and fins to navigate like a skydiver. 
Musk first revealed this concept in September 2018 and has since repeated it in subsequent weeks. The space shuttle touched down on a runway akin to a glider with a cement shell. By using this novel strategy, SpaceX is able to avoid using massive wings, saving Starship from expending far more mass on aerodynamic surfaces that it will seldom require. Notable features of the space shuttle include its enormous delta wing coated in tiles and its state-of-the-art shielding, which was partly responsible for the Columbia disaster. It's a little-known truth, though, that the U.S. Air Force's requirements for cross-range performance, that is, the ability for shuttles to go more than 1,000 miles during flight and re-entry, were virtually solely responsible for the size and shape of the wing. This greatly restricted the shuttle's design and prevented it from ever being deployed for its intended function. Fortunately, SpaceX does not have a stand-in U.S. Air Force making significant demands, apart from Elon Musk. Rather, Starship will carry on SpaceX's legacy of vertical landings by plummeting straight to its belly, resembling a skydiver or a brick, and then propelling itself upwards with the help of its fins and engines. In this sense, Starship only needs to be able to descend steadily and swiftly from a horizontal to a vertical orientation, unlike the shuttle, which was essentially a brick pushed to fly. Furthermore, the shuttle relied on an aluminum alloy and required thermal protection for every square inch of its hull, whereas Starship is almost entirely constructed of steel. Steel melts at a temperature that is almost twice as high as the alloy used in the shuttle, thus Starship should be able to get by with just ceramic tiles on its windward half, saving mass, money, and time. So now, let's explain more about Starship's belly flop maneuver. A novel and distinctive method of landing a rocket is the Starship landing maneuver. The Starship drops out of the sky belly first in order to release as much energy as it can while falling in free fall. It'll ignite two Raptor engines at full throttle, fold in the rear flaps, and swing from horizontal to vertical at an altitude of around 500 meters to enable a tail down landing on its landing legs. The belly flop maneuver is a very risky and challenging way to bring the ship back to Earth so that it can be utilized again. The reasoning behind the action is not too complicated. When an object falls from space, the Earth's gravity will cause it to accelerate until it reaches its terminal velocity, which is the point at which the upward force of air resistance and the downward force of gravity balance each other out. The object will accelerate less before the forces balance, hence, the greater the air resistance, the lower the terminal velocity. Through the process of belly flopping, Starship reduces its terminal velocity by a significant amount by increasing its bottom surface area from 70 square meters to 545. This lowers the amount of fuel and maximum deceleration needed to stop the vehicle since it will be moving more slowly, as well as the amount of heat that the vehicle will ultimately absorb from friction. It takes incredibly skilled engineering to execute such a difficult operation. This kind of large, scalable, reusable vehicle will greatly broaden our prospects in the spaceflight industry. And now, let's look back at why Starship is black and silver. The 300 series stainless steel alloy, a non-corrosive form of steel, is responsible for the majority silver look of Starship. Since the 1950s, no one has created a rocket using this material before. Steel is heavy, which is why most rocket firms steer clear of it. The heavier your rocket is, the less cargo can send into space with the same fuel tanks. Instead, most rockets use lightweight strong metals like titanium and aluminum for their outer frame. Although titanium can cost up to 15 to 20 times more than steel, it is an excellent material for lightweight rockets. Because of this, SpaceX decided to replace the titanium grid fins on their Falcon 9 rockets in 2019 with welded steel fins. SpaceX now favors steel over titanium in their rockets, but there are other factors at play as well. Experts in material science claim that steel performs better than titanium in extremely hot environments. This refers to situations in which there is intense heat, such as during launch and atmospheric re-entry, as well as extreme cold, such as in deep space. That is crucial because Starship is meant to carry people to the moon and Mars in the future, where they will encounter extremely low temperatures, as low as minus 455 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 270 degrees Celsius that might weaken and fracture ordinary rocket material. It is perfect for distant space travel since stainless steel, on the other hand, actually gets stronger at these cryogenic temperatures. Furthermore, as told by University of Southern California astronautics professor Mike Gruntman, the vehicle skin is subjected to dynamic loads during the power descent through the atmosphere, so structural strength of the materials is also important. Plus, price also plays a role. Gruntman also stressed the importance of using stainless steel to prevent corrosion. 
Like NASA's space shuttles, Starship is black underneath and for good cause. The black is a sequence of silica hexagonal tiles that can withstand high heat and are intended to shield the spacecraft from intense heat when it re-enters Earth's atmosphere. Elon Musk shared a close-up of these tiles in action from many flamethrowers on X in March 2019. The hexagonal form of Starship's tile sets them apart from space shuttle tiles. Square tiles made up the shuttle's design. Concerning the unique design of the tile, an ex-user contacted Musk about it. He said that hexagon-shaped tiles give no straight path for hot gas to accelerate through the gaps. Or to put it another way, it's an extra precaution against a spaceship overheating and exploding during re-entry. So why are rockets mostly white? The cost is the obvious explanation. White is the hue in the visible spectrum that absorbs the least heat, therefore it helps keep the rocket as cool as possible. And that's critical since rocket fuel normally requires storage at a temperature between minus 297 and minus 432 degrees Fahrenheit. It will therefore be less expensive to keep your rocket cool if it is white when it is baking in the intense sun on the launch pad for hours or for days. According to studies, silver cars had cooler cabins than black cars, which suggests that this may also apply to silver. Regarding whether or not that's the rationale behind their silver Starship rocket, SpaceX declined to comment. However, since the paint is heavy, it makes sense that they will save money on paint and end up with a lighter rocket if they can leave the rocket's original steel color instead of painting it white. Absorptive and emissive properties, including color, will always play a role for passive thermal control, Grutman explained, but white performs even better than silver in terms of heat management. Although SpaceX has provided a clear reason for Starship's silver and black exterior, it's likely not merely a showpiece and is instead intended to keep the rocket light and safe. Based on the lessons learned at Starbase, do you believe SpaceX will drastically alter the design, or will it remain the same with the addition of a water suppression system? Please share your thoughts in the comment box below. And that ends today's episode. We sincerely hope you enjoyed our video. Make sure you subscribe and don't forget to like today's video, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.